so honored to have as guest for this day, Ms. Loida Nicholas Lewis. Hi, Loida. Hello, Maria. In celebration of the Black History Month, Ms. Loida Lewis takes us to her home on Fifth Avenue and remember the legacy of her husband, Reginald Lewis, the first black billionaire deal maker. She also tells us how she sustained that empire with faith and persistence. Reginald Lewis has long gone, but his memory lives and his legacy lives through you. So what are the things that um, you're doing on his behalf? There's an African saying, mm -hmm. that as long as a man's name is said, he never dies. Oh. And so in his honor, mm -hmm. we have this, we, we donated to Harvard Law School and they named the school after him, International Law Center. We also donated to his alma mater, Virginia State University, and they named the College of Business for him. In the Philippines, in Sorsogon, when I was born and where I grew up, mm -hmm. there is the Lewis College, also erected in his memory. And then, the most important is that 25 years after he has died, the WNET Channel 13 is coming out with a documentary. It's named Pioneers, mm -hmm. Reginald Lewis, and the making of a billion empire. I understand that it will, it's very difficult to be in love with somebody with a different cultural background, somebody who's also very high in economic strat stature. And so how did you cope with that? How did you maintain a relationship with Reginald Lewis? And of course, being a Filipina and he being American, yeah. he always says, you know, I'm international. When we first met, uh -huh. when I was saying, talking about, uh, you know, race and African-Americans, he said, I'm international. Oh. And indeed, 20 years later, he was international. <laughs> but, so I was dealing with him as man and woman, American and Filipina. Mm -hmm. And our first year of marriage was difficult. Mm -hmm. So I had an ally, his mother-in-law. Amazing. And so I would call her and say, Mom, you uh -huh. know, it's so hard. And she said, all right, Laila, go to the toilet, spit on it, flush it, and then you're better. Oh, and did it work? Of course. You know, you need, uh, you need um, an, out an uh, what do you call it? Yes, an outlet, a mm -hmm. person who is like a sounding board, uh -huh. and Mrs. Fugit, my mother-in-law. I don't call her mother-in-law, my mother-in-law. So a year after your husband's death, you decided to take over your company, but it wasn't an easy decision. What finally motivated you to take over? When he died after a short illness, I was just totally, totally out of it, mm -hmm. because, you know, as a Christian, I always believe you pray, God will answer, and, and you know, I pray that he be healed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know God will answer me by healing him eternally. Mm -hmm. So that was so hard for me the first few months. Not that I was angry with God, but I couldn't tell the Lord, your will be done. I couldn't really accept it yet. Mm -hmm. But after, during that year, I started to see his company that he worked for mm -hmm. in a way that he died for, going south, you know, mm -hmm showing red meaning it's going to go bankrupt okay and how could i let that happen when that was his goal and so after one year i got myself together and i told my daughter i'm taking over and she said what took you so long and that was the day of the board meeting so mm -hmm. i started to call my brother-in-law gene who was then ceo my other brother-in-law tony and one by one, we called the board of directors and explained to them. With my family, Leslie, Jean, and Tony, and me, talking to each one individually mm -hmm. that I'm going to take over. And so, they voted me chairman. And by the middle of next year, CEO. And that's how I took over TLC Beatrice International. So, tell us how did you turn the company around? By the time I took over the company, I was already doing Zen practice, meaning quiet time for 15 minutes mm -hmm. and having reflection so that God will give me the wisdom and the, dis and the discernment. But what the uh, people don't know is that I'm a lawyer mm -hmm. and I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I did not take accounting, but I know what's the bottom line. Did we make money? Are we in the black? Are we in the red? Mm -hmm. And also, I have basic sense of what people are. And so 
uh, you know, I have established very close relationship with our managers because the managers of Beatrice Foods International mm -hmm. were previously owners of the company they sold to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. So although they are minority partners now, they're running it as if they still own it. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're, you know, so they are, they have been very successful, so they're very successful again. Mm -hmm. And in order to the, uh, reduce the debt of one billion, my husband sold and was able to pay for 750 million. And so we only have around three million in debt. Mm -hmm. And so for that to be paid, I sold companies. And the biggest was from Pre and Leader Price in France. So we had so much money, we had zero debt. Now what mm -hmm. do I do with that surplus? If I, dis if I distribute it as dividends, my shareholders is going to pay huge income tax. Mm -hmm. But if I liquidate the company and sell it, then they're only going to call to pay capital gains, lower taxes. So that's what I did, liquidate the company. And I liquidated one by one, piece by piece, paid all the debt, and got a billion dollars for my shareholders. Well, when I took over, I knew that I will have to take over because I didn't want to assign a CEO, you know, he may be white, he may be African-American, mm -hmm. but if he fails, you know, that's the whole life of my husband. Right. And so I took over so that I don't have to point if it fails. Mm -hmm. Three fingers are, paint, uh, are pointing at me. Mm -hmm. I am responsible. We take care of our own. And so how do you run? At that time, the sales were $2 billion. Mm -hmm. So how do you run it? And I, I depended on my managers. Mm -hmm. okay? I would meet them four times a year. I would go and visit every month. I, I lived in practically in Europe. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm very grateful to mom, my mother in love. She took care of the children. Okay. But Leslie then was already in college, mm -hmm. in Harvard. Mm -hmm. So how did I manage it? Just keeping close watch over the, my, my, over my managers, over the financial statements. And then if there's a company that is not returning, I sold it. I see. Okay? Or changed managers, fired the manager. Because it's either he brings the company down or I, I maintain the value of the company. So there was no second thoughts about that. So was I daunted? Yes, I was, it was daunting. But I knew in my heart I could do it too. Thank you so much, Ms. Loida, for that wonderful interview. And see you next week, ladies and gentlemen.